please welcome back Pedro Almodovar. And we also have uh, helping us with Thank you. Thank you so much. Carla Marcantonio. I thought maybe we would start by um, asking you, Pedro, to elaborate a little bit on um, what you were saying about the Western in your introduction. I'm curious about just your your relationship with the genre. Like, w did you watch a lot of westerns? At what stage of your life? Which which westerns? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't play games to the uh, to the gunfighter or um, because I mean the the, the western we. We saw, I mean, the, the Western I saw when I was a child, they were especially spaghetti Westerns and they were not so good. Because when I mentioned uh, uh, the, the, the trilogy of dollars, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, this is with Clint Eastwood, this is the exception. Uh, but usually they were not very good. So I didn't pay a lot of attention. Uh, when I discovered really the genre, I mean, I'm talking about Sergio Leone. Um, but not all then were like Sergio Leone. When I discovered the real Western, the American Western, it, when, I, when I went to Madrid, uh, when I was 18 years old, and then, I mean, it was my only school, just to go to every day to the Cinematheque. And then it was, it was when I discovered, really, I mean, I mean the Shirchers, uh, Red River, I mean, all the rivers they did. And then I was, I was, I never thought that there was such a big genre, and I felt completely in love with this genre. But I, I, I didn't think that it was so close to the style that I, the movies that I was doing in the, in the 80s. But anyway, for example, during the 80s, uh, I mean, in Duel to the Sun, uh, that appears in in Matador, my fifth movie. There is a there is a sequence, the, the last sequence of Duel at the Sun, uh, of Joshua Logan, just when when Jennifer Jones shot Gregory Peck, and also is is being shot by Gregory Peck, and they are linked by like one last kiss, something very melodramatic and very exaggerated. So I'm very, I mean, for me, I was, I was very, I mean, I was, it was very explosive, because I mean the characters of my movie. They see, because this is a theory that I have, they see on the screen something that is going to happen to them. But, and also in Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, there is the, I mean, the two protagonists, they are uh, dubbing actors, and uh, uh, Carmen Maura goes to, yes, to dub one of the more beautiful dialogues that, is, that there are in a Western, when, when in Johnny Guitar, uh, Sterling Hayden asked to, uh, to Johnny Crawford, uh, lie to me and tell me that you were waiting for me all the time. So even I, that I include these two uh, Western, I, I didn't think at that moment to make one. But uh, it was just in the, mm, I mean, late in the last three years that I start writing this, I didn't know that it will become a short but uh, just for fun, you know. Sometimes I write just for for fun, and they, and then I have I have many um, set pieces in my computer, and sometimes you know that set pieces uh, become part of a movie or a short, like in this case. I was also curious about what you said about um, in bringing desire into the Western, um, you know, in, you, in your introduction. And I'm curious about this question of desire in, in the Western historically. Do you think it's something that has been excluded or do you think it's something that's often there, like under the surface? I don't know. You know, you know that is, there are not only, I mean, this is a very old genre. This is, I mean, uh, was born with cinema. I mean, in the 19th uh, zero O. It was yeah. the first silent movie, mm -hmm. and it was a western. Do you know, I think unfortunately they are kind of profession, very male profession, that uh, it's like banned to, mm. I mean, any kind of, of of homosexual expression or desire 
between men. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not talking only about the the, the 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 Western, but also if you look at about the football. How you say football in English? soccer? Soccer. You can say football too. Soccer. It is prohibited. <laughs> I mean, you don't know uh, a gay couple or a gay man that played uh, soccer. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, more is like in the Spanish culture, also in the between the bullfighters, this is also prohibited. Okay. There is no one. I don't know, this is a kind of prejudices. What is incredible is that it lasts so much. Because now, I mean, I mean in, in 2023, and, uh, and it, it is curious that they never approach this subject. This subject in a, in, a, in, a, in a genre that is full of male. Uh, so that was, I mean, it was an advantage for me to talk about this uh, because I didn't find it. I mean, I found sometimes, uh, like in a movies like Warlock by Edward Dimitrik with Henry Fonda and Anthony Quinn, that uh, they didn't say the, 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 the word desire or the word. Uh, of a couple of men, but you only understand the movie if they are together. So, but but they don't say. So, but you know, I mean, the Western is very old, but quite young uh, to be. I mean, to make very new, new stories that appear not only not only desire between two men but also the point of view of women, because also the women were, I mean, just condemned to, to be the supporting role or even insignificant. And also, and also the, the point of view of the Indians, they are not very present. Uh, well, now, uh, Martin Scorsese in this festival will show one of wonderful not, masterpieces. Not in this festival, but he will show. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not in this festival, but it's, uh, it's showing. So. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So are we. Yeah. He deserves it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, sorry. Um, so there are many, many, many movies. And is that strange that uh, this genre, for example, uh, that I remember, for example, the three last Western that I remember, it was uh, First Co by Kelly, Kelly Richard, Riker, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, The Rider by Chloe, Chloe Zhao, Zhao. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, The Power of the Dog of Jane Campion. Curiously, they were three oh, women, women yeah. uh, and they did uh, something very original. So I think it's very alive. Also in TV, it's very popular. But uh, in this case, I think that this is a very traditional, in the worst sense, uh, I mean, in the, the yellow, yellow stone, but this is very, very traditional. <laughs> uh, I mean, all the values are that, like, uh, when the, I mean, in the 19th century, when the first colonos, they went, uh, and, uh, you, you know, there are many men, but, uh, but also the, 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 the female characters, they are more masculine than the male actors. So this, uh, well, so, so, I mean, this is a genre that is very alive. I'm intrigued that you know two of your three most recent films have been in the short form. They've been about 30 minutes, and I'm curious what what draws you to to working in this in this format. Do you is does it in some way by you know breaking from the the traditional structure of a feature film? Does it does it um, free you or liberate you in other other ways? Are you able to explore more with the short form? Es verdad que al hacer un formato más pequeño que el de una película larga, uno tiene la sensación, al menos yo tenía la sensación de recuperar mi juventud. It is true that when you're doing a short instead of a, instead of a feature, it happened at least to me that I felt like I was recovering my sense of youth. Como si estuviera empezando a hacer cine, y eso es una sensación muy grata. As if I was just beginning to make films, and it was a really a quite a wonderful feeling. O sea, yo todas mis películas las he hecho con total libertad, pero he tenido la sensación de haciendo estos dos cortos que recuperaba 
es, recuperaba una libertad que no había perdido, pero que me sentía más libre que en un formato largo. And it's true that I've always felt free while I'm making my films, uh, but there is something about the kind of liberty that I felt making the short um, that it really sort of incremented a sense of freedom that I hadn't felt in a while. Y después también las películas tienen que tener eh, su duración. Por ejemplo, esta historia que escribí, que son como 30 páginas, era una historia de media hora y no quería forzar a que durara más de lo que estaba escrito. And it's also true that stories have to last what they have to last. Uh, this particular story was about 30 pages long, uh, and it's all I needed really to be able to tell this story. Yo creo que la televisión ha liberado eh, la duración de los formatos. And I think TV actually uh, is, uh, we, we can say that TV has liberated uh, formats, what you can do with different formats. Aunque tengo la impresión de que si haces una película americana, por ejemplo, Scorsese, tiene que durar por lo menos tres horas o cuatro. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that if you make a film, especially like an American film, like Scorsese, it has to last three hours. I love him anyway. <laughs> um, no, but it's, um, but, but you know, so this is 31 minutes. Um, but many, many people ask me in the promotion in Europe about, about what happened with this couple. Uh, because some of them, they thought that this is a way to be together, but, uh, and then, I don't think so. This is not a couple that, uh, after being shooting Ethan Hawke, he stay, and they, they, they live together, yes, in the, in the ranch. Uh, so I figure out what happened after. Um, and if we have time, I'll let you, I'll let you know. This is just uh, two more minutes. No, they are not living together. <laughs> Ethan Hawke, it, it is a very, it's a, it has, he has a temper, very violent, so he's furious, bounded and furious, and uh, he pretend to be very ill, but when he is okay, he fight against Silva, and, uh, and just goes, goes uh, to, to look for the son uh, to Mexico. Eh, el, el, el hijo se ha convertido en un forajido eh, a el amigo que le recomienda a su padre lo mata y le roba todo el dinero y so, se convierte en una especie de, 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 de personaje de Sam Peckinpah So the son has become a bit of an outlaw the, the, the friend that his father had recommended he has shot, him, shot and killed him uh, and he's become kind of a Sam Peckinpah character Entonces es una persona que va dejando huella de donde, por donde va So he's leaving a lot of trace everywhere he goes para el sheriff es fácil buscarle. So the sheriff finds him easily. Y cuando Silva se recupera de la paliza que le ha dado Ethan Hawke, sale en busca de los dos. And once Silva recuperates from the beating that he's received from, from Jake, Ethan Hawke, he goes after both of them. Todo esto ocurre en México y hay un momento en que los tres vuelven a encontrarse como al final del de corto. And so all this happens in Mexico, and there's a moment where all three of them reunite again, just like you just saw in the film. Están condenados de nuevo, tres hombres con tres pistolas, o los tres armados. So three men, once again condemned, right? Each of them holding a gun against each other. Y de nuevo es, y, y de nuevo es Pedro Pascal quien toma la decisión. And once again, it's Pedro Pascal who makes the decision. Y en ese momento dispara a su hijo. And at that point, he shoots his son. Y lo mata. And kills him. Mira en un gran primer plano de Pedro y otro gran primer plano de Ethan Hawke. Mira a Ethan. And then you have a great close-up shot, reverse shot between Pedro and Ethan Hawke. Pero Ethan le da la espalda y se va. But Ethan turns his back on him and leaves. Esta pareja romántica está condenada a no vivir junta. So this romantic couple is condemned to never living together. Amazing. And you thought you were just getting a 30-minute film, so this is... <laughs> um, uh, I have to ask you about um, casting. Um, obviously, as you mentioned in your introduction, the actors are not, are not here with us, um, sadly. Uh, but they're 
crucial, I mean, to the film, not just individually, but obviously their connection um, and their chemistry. So did you have both of them in mind when you were writing, and how did you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. since the beginning. I knew, I knew both of them. I knew both, excuse me, both of them. Um, I met Ethan Hawke uh, doing The Orchard uh, by Anton Chekhov, the theater play in Madrid. And uh, I mean, we were like, the whole night talking, so we became friends. I mean, th this kind of friendship that actors and directors has, uh, if, if you only <laughs> watch that person one night. Uh, but I knew him. And, uh, and also Pedro, uh, when, when he was doing the Narcos, they were like four or five Spanish actors that they work with me, and sometimes they send me some, you know, some messages, and Pedro was around them, and Pedro said well, something that many people uh, told to me, and uh, that uh, made me feel very old, that this is, the, the line is that I grew up with your movies. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I believe him. So uh, when I have the script, I talk to them, I send them the script, and the, and they, 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 that the reaction was very extremely positive. They, they, they said, we, we want to work with you. So the only thing, the only condition, it was that they were working at the moment. Uh, Pedro, it was not that last January, the other one. Pedro, it was starting uh, The Last of Us. And he told me that, uh, that, she will be, uh, that he will be working six months. So we, we wait till June, and in July we were shooting. And uh, I mean, they were perfect. I think this is one of the more perfect casting that I have, or cast that, that I have. Uh, because, I mean, um, Ethan was exactly the, 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 the type of person that, that I, that I uh, define in, in the script. Uh, and also, I wanted the, uh, for Silva someone that belonged to another culture, so someone very different. And also, that very different in their ways to react among um, their own desire. One is very cold. I mean, Ethan is like, like well, it, it was alcohol. I mean, nothing happened last night. But of course, the happiness a lot, happened a lot. And, but the other one is warm. And is, is, I mean, it's not a, I mean, very sincere, very direct, and also very tricky. And so they, they, they were perfect for their roles. And uh, fortunately, because this is something that sometimes happens, and sometimes don't. Um, that since the very beginning, they, they have an incredible chemistry between them. And um, so they also, because I think that they were like foreigner in, in Madrid. I mean, Pedro Pascal is from Chile, but I mean, his Spanish is not so good. I mean, he's an American actor. He's an American actor. I mean, he, he, uh, he left Chile when, when he was six months. Um, so, they, 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 they made a kind of duo, a kind of group to be together even after the shooting. So that make me everything easier than usually. Uh, and I really, I'm, I really, I, uh, I mean, I've, after editing the movie, I really discover how incredible are their performances. I think in both of them, and also, and also thinking about. Uh, Pedro Pascal, for example, I mean, he demonstrates that he is really much more versatile than people think because you only see him in this kind of hero roles and he can make something completely different. And, uh, and also I'm very, very, very happy when I see Ethan that it seems to me that Ethan belongs to, the, to this genre. I mean, when, when, when we saw him, just dressed as, as a sheriff, I thought, my God, he's a real sheriff. So <laughs> I'm very happy just to have them both. Um, <clears throat> I will tell them that you upload them. I will tell them. I'm getting the sign that we only have a few minutes left, and I thought maybe we could end with uh, two questions from the audience. So we'll take a couple. Um, if somebody want, if you want to raise your hands. I see one over there. Yep. Yes, you. Yes, please. I'll repeat. We don't have microphones. So. Hola, ella es fanática. She is fanatic. Yeah, big fan.
I, I, no, no, I answer you, but she's going to translate you. Yeah. So, briefly, the, the questions about the music uh, and how Pedro composes music uh, for his films, it's clearly very important. It's music that is very moving. And is this something that is thought through from the very beginning or not? You know, for me, I mean, you can make a movie without, uh, without music. Uh, but music is one of the more important elements of narration for me. So, uh, I mean, the, uh, in the last uh, 25, yes, 25 years, I, I work with the same uh, musician, Alberto Iglesias, and I'm very lucky because <laughs> I will tell him also that you applaud him, <laughs> and he will be very happy to. And, um, and you know, Alberto is this kind of, of artist that doesn't have any kind of ego. Uh, I, I also worked before Alberto uh, with Ennio Morricone, that was incredible. But, you know, personally, I mean, uh, Ennio uh, just made his work and you keep it, you take it, and then, I mean, I, mean, I see the music with the, with, the, with the movie, and then if you don't like some parts, I mean, he, he doesn't do anything else. So, I mean, in, in Time Me Up, Time Me Down, that it was the case of Ennio Morricone, I admit that I, that I only uh, synchronized the 50% of, of his work, because the other part I didn't like. Um, with Alberto, I have a completely different relation. I mean, he's composing, I see the music with the image, and depending on my reaction, he just changed or he decides something different, or, you know, I mean, I, I am not a musician, but the only guide that he has is my reaction in front of the image once that I listen to music. So, and he's incredibly talented, and also he's in, in, incansable. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't tire. Yeah, uh, so sometimes I, I made him repeat one theme five times, and he does it from different point of view. So I'm very involved in music. For me, uh, it is very important. Uh, I'm not trying to to just yes, to create like a fake feeling, but to for me the music is like a kind of a second skin of the clothes you wear. I mean, for the character. In the character in this case is the is the, is the, the film. Since you actually mentioned clothes for the character, I think I want to just throw in one more question. Uh, the film, I think, it marks the sort of the launch of uh, Saint Laurent Productions. Um, so, there, uh, if you can talk a little bit about um, your collaboration uh, for the costumes. Um, yeah, it was very easy for me because uh, really, I mean, we talk. We, I mean, uh, Anthony Vaccarello at the beginning, he 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 present me like the real Western was. I mean, the real people uh, dressed uh, during the first period of the, of the 20th century. And, uh, and I didn't like, uh, I didn't like reality in this case. <laughs> uh, and uh, what, I, what I told him, and this is what we did together, basically I did, um, it was to, I mean, to have the influence in the movies. So, uh, uh, I didn't want to, to feel like real, but to recall the other movies that they were making about this genre. So, uh, everything that, that appears in the movie belongs to, I mean, the reference is some different movie. I mean, even because, I mean, I mean the, 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 the sheriff is very elegant, I'm always very black or very, uh, very obscure. But I wanted some color for some uh, characters or colorful like, like the Pedro Pascal character. So fortunately, then I found a movie by Anthony Mann called Bend of the River, where James Stewart brings a jacket, a, a green jacket. And I said to Anthony, that green jacket is for Pedro, because I need some colors. Uh, and also the horse, for example, they are they are in the in Red River by Howard Hawks. Uh, we imitate completely, and also the jewelry. So I mean, it was just how Hollywood represented uh, the, the West 
uh, what, um, what I took as reference for the movie. All right, we'll take one final question from you over there, yeah. Thanks. Hola. Well, she's, she's asking about his early Super 8 films, whether you have them in an archive, whether you're ever going to release them. Yeah, I don't know. I, I keep some of them uh, in my office, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to show them. Even I've been, I've been asked many times, because, you know, they were, it was really my, my only school. Uh, the, 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 I mean, these shorts, uh, that I made during the 70s of Super 8 millimeter movie. Of, of course, you, you cannot find it anywhere because this is um, in one box, bajo una calle, una llave. It's under lock and key. <laughs> now, they are too basic. I mean, they, are, they could be funny, but I don't know. This is really the beginning of someone, and I think, I think they, they, they are not worthy to be watched. <laughs> Thank you. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Pedro, thank you thank so much you. for the film. And thank you, Carla.